Hi everyone! I wanted to share with you a project that I finished recently that uses flexible circuit boards and what this is called is um, egg flexi sill, sort of like egg dry sill, the tree, except this one's flexi because it's made out of flexible circuit boards. It's actually derived from this thing called Blinky Buildings, which is from the um, like How to Manufacture Open Source Hardware book that was recently released, which I'll put a link to the description below. Um, and I was just sort of like, this is cool, yeah, making a derivative of this of a Blinky Building Board, which is similar to this but um, rigid PCB would be pretty cool to try it out in a flexible PCB. Um, I didn't have a favorite building, but um, I like trees a bit, so created a tree. There's the uh, sort of like main um, area, and that's where all of the circuitry for the Charlie plexing is and um, for the uh, microcontroller. So this is an AT Tiny 85 and it's just running some uh, code to blink the LEDs um, for Charlie plexing. All the wires go out to like this main area here which is then where the wires jump to each of their LED leafs, <laughs> what I call them. And the leafs are attached to this main board just with these little solder um, tabs. Since it's a flexible PCB, then the leaves can, are able to move and sort of flap around in the wind. Sort of like a real tree, <laughs> except not quite. It's powered using a, a coin cell battery, and there's also a little switch on here. The base is just 3D printed um, with PLA filament. It's supposed to look like roots, but I don't know. Um, and on the bottom it says connect knowledge, <laughs> kind of cheesy, whatever. This material is um, called Pyrolux, that is. and Pyrolux is just a layer of capped on tape and then an adhesive and then copper on top of it. So you can actually get uh, sheets of it now from Adafruit, so this is what a sheet of Pyrolux looks like. So how do we go from this material to this? Well, the first part is to obviously lay out your PCB. This is an example here of what ours looked like. It's printed out on paper, so you can see here's where the AT Tiny is. And here are some LED leaves. You take that design and convert it to a PNG, so and then you convert that PNG into an STL file. Then you're going to 3D print a resist onto it. Here is an example of a board that we made that still has the um, resist on it. So we 3D print NinjaFlex onto a piece of Pyrolux and so it adheres to the copper pretty well. What we usually do is we take a piece of glass, which is photo frame. <laughs> this one's a little dirty, but anyway. Um, we apply glue stick onto the area where the board will be, and then paste down the Pyrolux onto it. And then we put this into the 3D printer, uh, right where the center is of the bed. We print out the resist onto it. It takes a few times to get the um, to get the build plate level enough. Once you have the resist on your board, um, it stays attached to this glass. And then from there, what you do is chemically etch it. So right here is where we actually do our etching. Um, you can, it usually takes a few hours for it to etch. So after it's done etching. Um, you take it, you take the glass piece, the slide with your Pyrolux out of it, and then you um, remove the Ninja Flex, and uh, it's done basically. Except that <laughs> um, there are some problems that can happen. Sometimes there are threads of filament when you're 3D printing that get attached to the main traces. And when that happens, you can usually use a X-Acto knife to go through and um, break them. 
except sometimes um, you end up cutting through the actual um, capped on tape backing. So this is an example of what happened here. Totally cut all the way through and this is very difficult to remove off of the glass. Had to be super careful. It's still usable and I probably still will use it for something because I don't want anything that's um, flexible and material like this to go to waste. I, mean, I could still make a Arduino derivative bracelet with this if I, um, maybe if I put a duo tang um, backing on it and secure it onto there. This board design was actually for a wearable robot idea that I had. It's this robot where there's these two motors attached to this duotang base. There's um, caster wheels here, and these are the actual wheels. This is a battery pack, and it's like sort of attached in with this duotang insert. Anyway, um, this Arduino derivative would go onto here like that. Um, there would be a shift out chip and a motor driver chip. And the idea is that you could wrap this around your leg and then detach it and then it would drive around and use its bright white LED to um, look for things or maybe contact someone for help or raise a ruckus to um, get noticed um, for someone to help you eventually. And then it could track back towards wherever you are. Here's an example of another flexible circuit board that I make. This is the Flexi NeoCube version 2, which is which uses the WS2812B LEDs rather than the S, so it makes the circuit a bit cleaner. There's only one jumper that's needed. Um, and so you can fold this up to create a cube, which is pretty cool. Now, with all that said, there is actually an easier way uh, I believe to create flexible circuit boards and um, with less chemicals involved and stuff. So you see this copper tape? Um, this is just stuff that you can use to like um, quickly prototype something like <laughs> here we use copper tape on a little battery um, a case that we were experimenting with for AAA batteries. And so this stuff works pretty well. It's just um, copper and then a little, uh, some sort of backing on it. But imagine if you had this copper tape, but wider, um, much wider, then uh, you could actually put this into a vinyl cutter and then vinyl cut out your PCB design and then just stick it onto whatever and then weed out the uh, the spaces that you don't need. Um, it looks tricky to get it started, like to figure out what um, uh, strength to put the knife at and the speed, but once you get going with it, it looks really cool. Um, it would be a really easy way to add circuits to glass. So like, <laughs> instead of sticking Pyrolux to this glass, you'd actually be able to put a circuit on it. That's all for now. Please see the links in the description below for all of the files and more URLs where you can look at this sort of stuff. And let me know if you have any crazy, flexible um, circuit ideas, because playing with this stuff is a lot of fun. Um, you just have to figure out what project is most worthwhile to work on. And right. thanks to everyone who backs um, these videos on Patreon. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks for watching.